interacting with so many different people uh, and looking out amongst ourselves here, amongst our ward, and just seeing how different everybody is. Everyone is so different in this world and we're all unique. We all have different experiences that have driven us to our personalities and to our outlook on life, the way we look at things, the way we look at challenges, the way we overcome challenges, how we interact with each other. It's just amazing to me how our Father in Heaven could create so many different individuals and send us down here to Earth with an opportunity to learn and grow. And we all have a different package of challenges that we go through. Everyone has them. Everyone here has challenges. Everyone here has a family or friends of some fashion to help us with the things that we need to deal with. But we all have challenges and we all have opportunities to learn and grow in this life. And it, just a few things that, that I've been thinking about and how we all have our own challenges, but yet we all have our own strengths too. We all have our own superpowers in some fashion, right? And where other people have weaknesses, some people have weaknesses, other people have strengths. And that's why it's so important that we're down here on earth in families, in a ward family, in a church family, because we all have different strengths and weaknesses and we can help each other and serve one another. This week as I watched some of the young men doing different service activities or helping each other with different things, whether it be on a team wall trying to get over a wall or, or, or whatever the case may be, it kind of nailed back into my mind how important service is and service is just such a key part of the gospel of Jesus Christ, that we use our talents, we use our abilities, we help each other have a better day, we help each other with any challenges that, they, that, that, that someone else may have, and just how important all that is. It's interesting how the gospel just seems to be a huge puzzle that just little pieces, every once in a while you stumble on a couple of pieces and you go, oh, that's how that fits together. And it's all just a big mosaic, the gospel of Jesus Christ and the plan of salvation that we're all a part of. So I just want to share my testimony that, that I, I truly believe that we are all sons and daughters of our Heavenly Father. And even though we are all unique, we are all very different, He knows each one of us. He knows our challenges, He knows our strengths, and He's there to help us all along the way, no matter what our difficulties or problems may be. And the funny thing is, is that all I look back at my life of the difficulties and the challenges that I've dealt with and the good things that I've dealt with, and I wouldn't have it any other way. As, as hard and as good as it has been, I have learned the things that I need to learn up to this point in my life, and I can see that it's a loving Father in Heaven that has given me the opportunities and the challenges to help me develop and grow. And that's the way it is for all of us. We're all here, just life is experiential. We go through this life to experience so many different things and to rub shoulders with so many different people to allow us to learn and develop and to become the sons and daughters of our Heavenly Father that He wants us to, to, to become. I'm thankful for the gospel of Jesus Christ. I'm thankful for the perspective that it gives us in our lives. I'm thankful to know that I have a Father in Heaven that loves me, that loves each one of us. I'm thankful for Jesus Christ and for His willingness to sacrifice for us, His willingness to come down here on earth for a period of time and show us through His example how we should live and how we should treat one another. I'm thankful for the Holy Ghost and for the opportunity that, that we have to have God with us if we ask for the Holy Ghost to be part of our lives so that we can have good ideas and have 
promptings of how to help one another and how to re- live our own lives in a way that would be pleasing to God and to us. And I'm thankful for the restoration of the gospel of Jesus Christ for the Book of Mormon and the fact that we have a prophet today that leads us and guides us and helps us understand and know the will of our Father in Heaven to overcome the challenges that we have just in our in our own period of time here. So this is this is my testimony, and I leave it with you in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen. Now is the opportunity for for you to share your testimonies. We will close at uh, 25 minutes after the hour, and uh, we do have a roaming mic here. So if there are any of those who would prefer to to use that, uh, just go ahead and raise your hand, and uh, and, and it will suddenly be delivered to you. <laughs> My papa went to heaven one month ago. Today, Gigi told me that we don't really say goodbye. We say until we meet again. I'm grateful that we we will spend eternity together with our families in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. I'm so glad to have the testimony of Jesus Christ and Heavenly Father and of the Holy Spirit to know that my Father is our Father in Heaven that He loves us, that He prepared a plan for us, plan of salvation of all the world and happiness, plan to overcome all our temptations and our weaknesses to be ready to let go, to have an opportunity to repent, to turn home to our Father in Heaven and to be a family for eternity. I'm grateful for his mercy and for his forgiveness and for all the many blessings that he pours out upon us. I'm grateful that he's asked us to ask him for the blessings that he would like. I say these things in Jesus Christ. Amen. So I recently uh, found a Mary Elizabeth over on our family vacation at Great Lake, Utah, and I, um, we were just eating, and I, I received a minor injury, and then last week we got a piece of blessing, and, um, and so during the past week I was in recovery, my, um, my injury is, is recovered pretty well, and uh, I, this is just a small example of strengthening of how the priest blessing, or, or my testimony of the priest blessing is, it's great, you know, we call our loved ones and either wherever our situation wants to help us, um, whether it be a small injury or or whatever it is that's going on in life, he's, he's aware of us and wants to bless us. Um, grateful so much for um, or that he loves us, wants to bless our lives. And, um, and uh, I know that he's the only father of our father of us, and that Christ is truly our Savior, and that the book one was translated and
So, uh, Lord, want me to tell you guys this? Um, I recently, uh, well, my whole entire life, I've been praying, dear Heavenly Father, and you know, thank you for this day, thank you for all these things, and then ask for a bunch of blessings. Say, 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 I've been doing that since uh, I was about three years old. And recently I said, Dear Heavenly Father, I love you. And then I said the prayer. And at the end I realized that we I love you are I was God's favorite. Love like mine. And it is good that we show God that we love him in our actions. And the actions do speak louder than words. John 14, 15 says, if you let me keep the commandments. But God also wants to be told that he is loved. And I think um, my life would have been more love driven if I had been taught a prayer format from a young child to say I love you to God first. If you're praying in a group, you can say we love you if you love. If you're sure that I love, there loves God. Um, Proverbs 22, 6, train up a child the way you should go, and when he is old, he will not depart from it. Like Brother Scovo, I had a chance to be at a women's camp um, this last week. And actually, the last couple of years, I've had an opportunity to plan for girls' camp, which is a huge production and takes months and months and months and months of planning. Um, and how these, as those months are going on, think, is this, is this worth it? And then I get up to camp. And I hear the testimonies of the young women and how they grow in just a few days. And no, absolutely, it's worth it. And my testimony this last week of service was incredibly strengthened as I sat and watched probably 50 members of our stake who gave up their time. Many of them gave up um, vacation days. Um, or opportunities to work. Um, they all gave up uh, a nice place to sleep and many hours of sleep just to be there and to support the youth. And I know that when we are in the service of our youth and our fellow beings are in the service of God. And my testimony was strengthened because of all the good, wonderful people who spend their time doing that and I'm so thankful for the youth and their energy and their strength and their testimonies and um, I can't remember the quote but it says basically uh, when you don't bear your testimony at the pulpit you bear it in how you live and I see those youth with strong testimonies in how they live and Actually, not just the youth, but everybody here in this congregation. I am so thankful for you. I'm so thankful for my Savior. I know that he lives, and I'm so thankful for my relationship with him. And I say these things in his name, Jesus Christ. Amen.
So for context, I ended up at the epilepsy for the story. I spent a year of college going to UVU and I was living at my grandparents' house and I was thinking of doing another year. And I just, I was having a lot of seizures. So I called up my mom and said, I don't, to, I don't know what to do. Should I go or should I stay? My mom, my mom prayed about it. I prayed about it as well. And she got the feeling that I should come back. I was, I did not like that feeling. I didn't like the feeling of going, going back home. I was against it all the time. My mom called me and she kept on saying that I should come back. I should come back. She called me three times. And so I, I gave in and went back home. And right after that, since then, I have had five seizures a month in the form of elevation. So we, we kept on going to the doctor, kept on asking what's wrong. And so he gave us an option. Either take more meds or get one of two surgeries that we don't know if it's going to work or hurt you. So we prayed about it and we decided to get the surgery that has a 50% rate of working. So we prayed about it and we decided that we should do it. That surgery that causes this has saved my life. I'm not a year seizure free. If we didn't pray about it, I wouldn't be here. I wouldn't be out in the field bearing my testimony, helping people come to Christ. And because of that, because of the because of the Spirit helping us, telling us what to do, a lot of lives wouldn't be giving a testimony, wouldn't be developing a testimony in general. In Jesus Christ, amen. amen. Okay. There are a few people in this ward who knew me when I was a teenager here. And I was kind of a brash kid. Thought I was pretty cool. Enjoying life. My dad. work on this car together. Man, I did not want to work on a car with my dad. I had no interest in it whatsoever. Now, in my defense, these weren't cool cars. They were like a Pinto. <laughs> they were, you know, a Ford station wagon. And dad just really loved taking these things apart. I mean, down to the, I remember when he had a transmission laid out on the stairs. Oh God, I'm up the Fast forward. I'm in my 30s. Starting to have kids with Diane and I. Starting some wonderful family. And I really started to see my dad that somebody I wanted to talk to him. And he got a heart attack and died at 55. And I really miss my dad. I miss him to this day. 
the relationship could have been so much more if I had spent a little time in the garage with Dad. You know, as I get older, I recognize a couple of things, particularly about the gospel and about family. I am convinced, brothers and sisters, I testify this from my own perspective, that like Eric said, Heavenly Father wants us to have Him in our lives, but it's got to be more than just routine. It's got to be a connection that we can have. But it takes some effort for us to step forward to make our covenants that we've made with him important. I testify, brothers and sisters, that we, if we will look for them, will recognize the hand of God in our lives individually. But we have to be looking for them, and we have to be wanting to have that relationship. If we continually walk away from them, Heavenly Father, ask me to spend a little time with us. Where we're growing and developing with Him, we're going to miss a lot in life. He's there. I testify, brothers and sisters, that Heavenly Father's there. He loves us, He is so patient. I testify that the Savior's church here on the earth is the way to really know about the Father. I testify that the Holy Ghost is a real person. And we can, I, I could talk for hours and Dave Gates would back me up on this. How the Spirit can give us ideas and open our minds to situations that we have no idea how to how to handle or fix or what we're doing or how things are going. Heavenly Father loves us so much. I testify that, brothers and sisters. I do it in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen. Good morning, brothers and sisters. I apologize. I know I bore my testimony last month. I don't like giving others an opportunity. I just felt so impressed to be able to follow up. The uh, power of the testimony that this young elder shared really touched my heart. I am so impressed by the example of young people in the church. And yes, elder, I consider you a young person. Both of you. Mm -hmm. The type of faith and courage that it must have taken mm -hmm. a young person such as yourself to make those kinds of decisions and choices in circumstances that I don't understand personally. It's not faced with those circumstances. But the power of a testimony like that really strengthens me and I bear witness to you, especially to you young people, that you're not too young. You are not too young. In fact, you're at the perfect age. You're teachable. Remember to turn to your loving Heavenly Father, as was shared in an earlier testimony. God does love us. And especially the young people who are teachable. I bear witness that you're at the perfect age for being able to develop a relationship with your Heavenly Father and with your Savior, Jesus Christ. Who requires stepping out in faith with prayers and gospel study, listening to a prophet, and having the faith such as one witness by this young elder. I bear witness to you that God does hear your prayers, 
part of your lives. And he has great, great things in store for you. I love you too, my brothers and sisters. I know that we're led by a living prophet today. And if I let us that Jesus Christ is our Savior and Redeemer. And I say this in the name of Jesus Christ, amen. amen. Sisters, um, for those of you that don't know me, um, I'm Stacy Yelling Housen Johnson. Um, I'm the youngest daughter of Carl and Lori. Um, and my heart's feeling a little tender today. Seeing this chapel, I'm just reflecting back. This is the chapel where I was raised. And where my testimony grew and developed. And I see familiar faces in here that are still here. And I thank you for the influence that you had in my life in helping me to grow and develop my testimony. Um, I was grateful for this sweet young sister who started our meeting off with. That Papa had gone, but it, it's not goodbye. This I'll see you later. Uh, as we had been going through Mom and Dad's house and um, cleaning out a lot of things this week, it's been a tiring, exhausting task. Um, but again, they are not the things. Their spirits are alive and well, and we know that we will see them again someday. And we're so grateful for that knowledge. I just want to bear my testimony of that. I know that our Savior lives. Grateful for this gospel. And I say this in Jesus' name, amen. amen. for the 
the footprints poem. It talks about how there's usually two, but during the hardest times of your life, I looked back in the sand and there was only one. I know that Heavenly Father and Jesus Christ live. And I know that if we humble ourselves and we ask for their help, they will shower us with so much love and comfort and strength. I have learned more about myself and the Godhead in this past month. I know that this church is true. I know. Jesus Christ and the Holy Ghost are really just waiting for us to humble ourselves and to ask for their help. There are so many tender mercies of mine. If we would just take the opportunity to be slow for a while, they'll just start popping out of love. I want you all to know how very much I love you all. And it's very serious in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. Thank you, brothers and sisters, for your testimonies today. It was really nice to, to hear such good testimonies and to, to strengthen one another today. Um, I'd like to thank Sister Yelena House and Sister Clays for the music today. And uh, we will conclude our sacrament meeting by singing hymn number 152. God be with you till we meet again, after which Sister Terry King will give our benediction.
Heavenly Father, we're so grateful for this beautiful Sabbath day and for the opportunity and the blessing of being able to come here and to bear our testimonies, whether they be out loud or silently, and to hear the beautiful testimonies of others. We're grateful for the opportunity to take the sacrament and renew our vows with these, Father. And these things we pray in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen.